This chapter will be a basic skills review. In this lesson, we're going to go over place value and rounding. Okay, hi everybody. So in this uh, chapter here, we're going to take a look at some basic skills that you're going to need throughout the rest of this course here. And the first one we're going to look at here is rounding and place value. Okay. So let me just kind of walk through through this with you here. This is a skill that we will be using this entire course is rounding. And you know what? That's going to be true of, of a lot of math courses that you take. Very few are you going to uh, not require that that skill of being able to, to round a number to the closest indicated place value. Uh, and that's a that's a, an important skill when it comes to estimation as well, right? This is this is one of those things that, that we do. Like when people ask, you know, when am I ever going to use this in the real world? Well, this is something that actually people do on a daily basis. You know, we round, we estimate, we we approximate. So first we need to understand place value, because if you don't know that what uh, place the the question is referring to, then it's, imp it's impossible to round this properly here. So here we go. A little chart for us to look at. So here's our decimal. And remember, to the left, to the left of the decimal, these are going to be the numbers that like our, our counting numbers, the numbers that we that we work with, uh, like right from very very young, right? So the space, uh, just one space to the left of that decimal is going to be the one space, and then the tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, and so on. And actually, these numbers are, are numbers that we're really familiar with, particularly uh, because of everybody's interest in money. I mean, it's it's very easy to tell, you know, this is like tens of dollars as opposed to hundreds of dollars or or millions of dollars, right? Those numbers become very familiar to us. It's when we get to the other side of the decimal that things can sometimes get a little foggy for people, okay? Because notice there's no once space. People tend to want there to be that kind of symmetry here, but there there isn't. The first spot after the, the decimal here is the tenths spot, okay? So how many, like we're, we're taking, uh, we take a value, chop it up into 10 pieces. This is going to tell us how many of those we have. And then we go another step over and it's the hundredths. Okay, with the TH at uh, S at the end, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, millionths. Okay, and those, those are the way that we label those moving out from the decimal in both directions. It's just a matter of, of being kind of diligent enough to memorize that, if you will. But practice with numbers makes this better. Uh, and the more practice you get, the better here. However, the things that you really want to be familiar with, the ones that are going to come up the most often here are going to be the whole numbers, the tenths, and the hundredths. Okay, Throughout high school, in most of the math courses that you're going to take here, when you're asked to do rounding here, we're either going to ask you to round to the nearest whole, to the nearest tenth, or to the nearest hundredths. Those are by far the most common ones that we use. Sometimes you'll see us uh, ask people to round stuff to the nearest thousandths, and even in certain circumstances, the ten thousandths. And here I'm thinking about um, something we call trigonometry. Sometimes we, we ask students to go there, but by far, these are the most common. So anyway, let's take a look at, uh, just take a moment here, and we're going to identify the, the different spots, uh, the different placeholders. All right, so this question here says, underline the indicated place value. So all we really need to do is identify what number is in the indicated spot here. So the tenth, okay? The nearest tenth. Now remember, once we start dropping the TH, the THS, uh, after that, that 10, we are referring to numbers to the right of the decimal. And because, again, there's no once position here, we jump immediately to the tenth. So right here, this is, the 8 is in the 10th position. Okay, Then we look at this number right here, and don't, don't be thrown off by that comma there. Right? That comma there is just uh, to help us kind of split up these, these groups of three digits. Okay? Uh, there's, there's typically the way we count, there's this kind of major transition, particularly in the way we, uh, we name numbers, every three uh, placeholders there. That comma there is just to kind of give us a visual clue that there's a, a divide here so we can more quickly see that this is 32,647 point. And then we've got six tenths, two hundredths, five thousandths. So the tenth position, again, right uh, to the right of the decimal. Hundredth, again, with that TH there means we are to the right of the decimal. And the hundredth is 
the second one over. Uh, you can you can think of that in terms of the the number of zeros here, right? So the th tells us we're going to the right here, and ten has got one de uh, one zero in it, so it's one space over. Ten, one space over. One hundred will be two spaces over. It's the same as the number of zeros we've got. Again, the hundredth, two. So we're going to the second spot after the decimal. So it's the three. Now, ones. Okay, well, that, that is an ending in the TH. So I know that I'm going to go to the left of the decimal. And in this case, the ones position is going to be the four because the five will be the 10. Nine is the hundred. Again, ones, we're looking to the spot just immediately to the left of the decimal there. And that is going to be the number two. Okay, now let's take a look at rounding. So remember, rounding is that process uh, of taking a look at an answer that maybe has uh, like a long decimal, like some of the questions up here, they have long decimals here. And kind of thinking about, well, exactly how precise do I really need this number to be? Kind of picking that place value and then figuring out what number written to that place value is closest to the number that I've, that I've got here. Because that's all rounding is. We're just trying to figure out what number is closest to the, the number that I'm given here. Like what number is easy for me to work with that is closest to the number that I'm, that I'm actually seeing here. And for us in an academic setting, I mean, why is this really important? Well, I'll tell you why. So your written, uh, sorry, your assessments here are going to typically consist of written response, numeric response, multiple choice. In a written response question, if you make a rounding error, uh, you're probably not going to lose too many marks here. But if you make a numeric, a uh, uh, rounding error in a numeric response question, well, that's going to cost you, okay? Because the computers or the yeah the scanner is going to be looking for a very specific number, and if you don't give it, it will mark you wrong. Now, now we we are starting to have better and better programs here that'll uh, actually give us the ability to throw some other options in there. Um, but you got to be careful with it regardless, okay? You don't want to lose marks because of a rounding error. So let's just talk about how rounding works. And this is this is just a really good, um, I don't know, explanation uh, to give you a, kind of a starting point here. The more comfortable you get with this, the faster this is going to be, the, the less of this you really need to worry about here. But this is a, a really good place to start here. First of all, underline the place value in the, uh, the question is asking you to round to, okay? So... The question will typically identify a, a level of what we call precision, a place value. That's another word for it, precision here. Uh, you're going to underline that. You're going to identify that. The number to the right of it, okay, so the number indicating like the smaller place value is going to be what's significant here. If it's a 0 to a 4, then the number that I underlined is going to stay the same, okay, because basically we're going to round down. The number I'm given is closer to the smaller number at that point. If that number to the right is between 5 and 9, then we're going to increase the original number by 1. That's because the number that I'm given is actually closer to the next number uh, uh, related to that place, value, closest to that place value there. Everything on the left stays exactly the same, and everything on the right becomes a 0. Uh, but depending on on where that is, whether we're to the right of the decimal to the left of the zero, you wouldn't write. If it's if we're talking about a place value to the right of the zero, then you don't write any of those zeros. If it's to the left of the decimal, uh, then you would write those zeros in. Okay. Anyway, let's take a look at some examples here. Okay, so let's just jump in. We're just going to round every one of these numbers to the indicated uh, place value here. So for each of the following round of your place value, here we go to the nearest tenth. So I can identify the tenth. It's to the it's one to the right of the decimal here. Now I'm going to look to the number to the right here. I, I don't care about anything beyond that. It's only the number to the right that matters to me. Because that number is five to nine in that interval right here, the number that I've got inter, underlined here is going to go up which means we are closer to 103.9 than we are to 103.8, okay? Because that's the decision that I'm making, okay? I know that this number is slightly larger than 
But the question is, is it closer to 103.9 or is it closer to 103.8? And in this case, because that next number is 7, it's closer to the next biggest value. So this one right here. And again, I have to make sure I differentiate between the comma and the decimal here. The comma is not the number, uh, the, the thing that I'm, I'm going to kind of judging my placeholder from. It's going to be that decimal. And I want to go to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to underline that six. That's the one, des one place to the right. Then I look to the next number here, two. And again, I don't worry about that five there. It makes no difference. I, that is completely irrelevant. The only thing that matters is that number to the right here. And because it's it's a value between 0 and uh, 4, okay, one, uh, 0 to 4. I know that this whole number, this 32,647.625, is actually closer to the 0.6 than it is to the 0.7. So my answer here would be 32,647.6. Hundredth. Remember, hundredth means I'm looking for uh, the spot two places to the left of the decimal, so that's the 5. So now it's the number that's to the right of it that's uh, that's relevant. That is between, in that range, 0 to 4. So this number here is closer to 14.85 than it is to 14.86. Okay, Because that 0 0.1 tells me that I'm just a little bit beyond 0 0.85. Hundredth again. Identify the decimal. Two places over, it's the 3. Again, then I look to this number right here, okay, one to the right, and again, nothing else beyond that matters. So that two means that I'm just a little bit beyond 0.63, uh, which means that this number is closer to 0 0.63 than it is to 0 0.64, so I would round that to 0 0.63. To the nearest hole, okay, well that is one spot Okay, to the left of the decimal. But it doesn't matter uh, about the position of the decimal. I'm still going to look to that place value to the uh, one spot to the right. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter that there's a decimal in the way. I, don't, I just ignore that. I look at that 7 there. And because that 7 is in that 5 to 9 range, that means I'm going to round this up. That nine, uh, This 954.7 is going to become, or is closest to, 955. So that's the number that I'm going to use to approximate this one. Six, looking at the nearest hole. And again, that is the, the spot one to the left of the decimal. None of these other numbers are relevant. I look at the number one to the right, one place value to the right of that decimal. Or sorry, <coughs> not to the left, right of the decimal. To the right of the number that I'm looking at. And because that is in that five to nine range, I'm going to move that one up. So this is actually closer to three than it is to two. And notice in these last two numbers here, uh, because I was uh, was rounding to the nearest hole, I didn't put the decimal down. Okay, I didn't need to write the decimal. It's implied that the decimal is there. The decimal is at the end of that number if it's not written. But I didn't write it, and I don't write any zeros beyond that. I don't need to. That, that just is unnecessarily complicating the, the look of the number. I don't need that. Hundredth of a centimeter, okay? Well, it doesn't really matter that this is a measurement in centimeters. What matters is the hundredth. So there's my decimal. I go two places to the right. That's the number that I'm I'm uh, concerned about, or the, the place value that I'm concerned about. I look to the right. Because that is in the 5 to 9 range, that means I'm closer to 15.85 centimeters than I am to 15.84 centimeters. So this is the value that I would use to approximate this value. Cents, hundredth, okay? Because money goes to the nearest hundredth. When, we, when we're using it kind of practically, we go to the nearest hundredth here. So that's the four. Again, I look to the uh, one space to the right. That's the two. That means that we are closer to the 24 cents than we are to the 25 cents. So we would write this as 540.24. Tenth of an inch. And again, it doesn't doesn't matter what the units are here. That's that's not the relevant part of this problem. What matters is the tenth at this moment here. So there's my the the number in that place uh, value position that I'm looking for. I look one to the right. It's a four. That is in the zero to four range. So I know that this number is actually closer to one thousand eight hundred thirty nine point seven five than it is 
to 0.76. So this is the number that I use to approximate that one. Oh, sorry, and I should probably put the units there. I, Even though in this particular situation here, it doesn't really matter what the units are, I do want to be consistent with that. A tenth of a kilogram. So we're rounding to this right here. Now, this is an interesting one here. Okay, and I was, I was expecting this to come up pretty quick here. That's the place value that I'm interested in. I look over to the right. This is in that five to nine range. So this is going to go up one. Now, the thing is, once nine goes up one, well, the, the number large, one larger than nine is 10. 10 can't be written with just one digit. In all these other situations here, okay, my every time I round it up or round it down, it, it's just a one digit number, but nine doesn't work like that. If I round nine up, it's a two digit number. So that one in the, so I want this to become a 10. So that one is actually gonna bump up. It's gonna jump up to the next placeholder here. So this is gonna become 1.0. There's my 10, okay? And notice that the last digit of the, the 10 here is in that 10th position one to the right of the, the decimal here. Okay, so I always want to see whatever it is that ask, whatever placeholder it's asking me to round to, I want to see that placeholder uh, in that number, even if it does become zero, just like it did here. Okay, I realize that that is like one kilogram, but in this particular case, you're really 1.0 kilograms. And if you're wondering, well, why would I bother writing the point, uh, the point zero? It has to do with the the information that I'm, I'm giving you here this this is telling me that i've measured this and i know for sure it's like at least 1.0 like it's it's close to that that value anyway that will likely be explained uh, when you talk about accuracy and precision in a, in a later lesson here uh the whole meter okay again the fact that it's a meter is not really that important it's the hole that i'm looking for so it's the nine right here okay doesn't bother me that there's a decimal there i'm looking at the number to the right and because that number to the right is in that zero to uh, four range, I know that the 19, okay, 0.427 is closer to 19 meters than it is to 20 meters. So we're gonna leave it right there. And then finally, the whole degree. And this one is probably, even if you had, had some difficulty kind of getting your head wrapped around what was going on with some of the previous ones, this one here is usually a little bit easier to see here because we're going to the whole degree here. This is the number that I'm rounding, okay? I look uh, past the decimal to the first place value uh, to the right, and it's six, so it's in the five to nine range, which means that this is gonna go up to 10, okay? But I can't put a 10 in a single in a single spot here in one place value, because like 10 is a two digit number. So that one jumps up here and it's gonna for, uh, force that 79.6 to be 80. Actually, that, again, makes perfect sense because 79.6 is closer to 80 degrees than it is to 79 degrees, okay? So I hope that gives you uh, a little bit of, of confidence going for, uh, forward here from here uh, is to your ability to identify place value and to round to a given place value. <music>